Hi and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at stoichiometry. Stoichiometry is a section of chemistry that involves using relationships between reactants and products in a chemical reaction to determine desired quantitative data. What this usually means is we're using either chemical formulae or chem balanced chemical reactions to be able to calculate how much product is produced or how much reactants are used. I'm going to go through a series of different stoichiometric calculations that you might be asked to do. The first that we're going to look at is dilution calculations, and these often come up in the multiple choice section of advanced higher chemistry. For this first calculation, what you need to do first of all is to write out the formula for the chemical that you've been given. So here we have lithium sulfate. Lithium has a valency of 1 and sulfate has a valency of 2. If we read on in the question, we find out that we're going to be looking at lithium ions. So we also need to write out how many lithium ions we get for each mole of lithium sulfate. The question wants to know how much vol what volume of lithium sulfate we would need to make a solution by dilution. We've been given the concentration and volume of the lithium ion concentration. So we can work out the moles of lithium that we would have present at the end of the reaction using the moles equals concentration times volume equation that you've known since National 5. This gives us 0 0.2 moles of lithium ions. For every mole of lithium sulfate, you get two moles of lithium ions, so we need to divide this by two to work out how many moles of lithium sulfate we would require. This is 0 0.1. We have the concentration of lithium sulfate that's available. We need to rearrange the equation to allow us to calculate volume. So we'll have moles divided by concentration. to give us 0 0.25 litres, which is the same as 250 millilitres of solution. Pause the video now and try this question. This question is very similar. We need to start with the formula of the chemical that we've been given, which is magnesium nitrate. Magnesium has a valency of 2 and nitrate has a valency of 1. Later on in the question, we're told that we're looking at nitrate ion concentration. So we need to write down how many moles of nitrate ions we would get from a mole of magnesium nitrate. We have the volume and concentration of the nitrate ions, so we can work out the moles. Remember to divide any milliliter volumes by a thousand before moving forward with the calculation. Like last time, we need to look at what the relationship is between the moles of nitrate ions and the moles of magnesium nitrate. We must divide our moles of nitrate ions by 2 to find out how many moles of magnesium nitrate are required. Now we can rearrange the formula that we used earlier to allow us to calculate volume. We would need 0 0.0625 litres, which is the same as 62.5 millilitres of solution. The second type of calculation we're going to look at is precipitation or percentage by mass calculations. These usually come in questions which relate to gravimetric analysis. This question is in two parts. I'm going to do the first part of the question and then allow you to try the second part. We have a key of mass 12.5 grams and we know that it contains copper, silver and nickel. The key is dissolved in nitric acid and it's made up to 500 millilitres in a volumetric flask. We take some hydrochloric acid of 0 0.5 mole and we add this to 100 millilitres of the solution from the flask. This allows us to precipitate silver chloride which is then filtered, washed and dried. The mass of the precipitate is found to be 0 0.92 grams. We are to calculate the percentage by mass of silver that's found in the key. 
The best way to work through these calculations is to start from the last piece of information and work your way back to the start. So we have a mass of silver chloride of 0 0.92 grams. Using this and the gram formula mass of silver chloride, we could find how many moles of silver chloride were produced. This uses another relationship from National 5, which is mass divided by gram formula mass. You then find that the number of moles in the 100 ml sample is 0 0.0064. This is the same as the number of moles of silver as it's a one to one relationship. So the number of moles of silver in 100 ml is 0 0.0064. We can times this by 5 to find the number of moles in the original 500 ml solution and thus the key. And we find that that is 0 0.032 moles. We then need to find the mass of silver to be able to do percentage by mass. So if we do moles times gram formula mass of silver, we find that the mass of silver that we have in the, in the key is 3.46 grams. Another relationship from National 5, the percentage mass relationship, is the mass of silver divided by the total mass of the key, which was 12.5, times 100 and this gives us a percentage by mass of 27.7 percent. Try this second part of the question now. So like before we have the same key with a mass of 12.5 grams was made up to 500 ml in a volumetric flask with water after being dissolved in nitric acid. And we're looking at the filtrate that we had after precipitating the silver chloride. So that was 100 ml of filtrate. It's treated with dimethylglyoxime to produce a red precipitate. Uh, we've got the equation here with the gram formula mass of the red precipitate, which is this part here. The question tells us we have 7.51 grams of precipitate formed and we want to find the percentage by mass of nickel in the key. So like before, we're going to start at the end of the question and work our way to the start. So we have a mass of the red precipitate, which I'm going to write as nickel complex here, and we know that that is 7.51 grams. We've already been given the gram formula mass, so we can work out the moles of that precipitate. Which turns out to be 0 0.026 moles. The number of moles of nickel in the precipitate is the same as the number of moles of nickel that was in the solution. And that is within the 100 ml of solution. We need to times that by 5 to find how, how many moles there were in the original 500 ml solution. And that turns out to be 0 0.13 moles. We need to find the mass of nickel that was present to be able to work out the percentage by mass. So we'll do moles times gram formula mass. So we need the gram formula mass of nickel, 58.7. So we have 7.63 grams of nickel. If we do our percentage mass equation again, so we have 7.63 grams divided by 12.5 grams for the key, times that by 100, you have a percentage by mass of nickel in the key as 61.1%.
A type of calculation that you came across last year is the percentage yield calculation. We're going to have a look at this from a slightly different point of view this time. We're, we're given the percentage yield and we're given a mass and we're trying to find the mass that was used. So here is the synthesis for aspirin where we take salicylic acid, ethanoic anhydride and we produce aspirin and ethanoic acid. We're told in the question that this particular synthesis has a percentage yield of 65% and we need to know how much salicylic acid we would require to make 4.76 grams of aspirin. So if we first of all write out the equation that we use for the percentage yield calculations, so we have actual yield divided by theoretical yield multiplied by 100. So if we take the information from the question, we have 65%. The actual yield is going to be 4.76 grams. We don't know the theoretical yield and we are times in by 100. If we rearrange this, we can find that the theoretical yield will be 4.76 divided by 0 0.65, giving us a theoretical yield of 7.32 grams of aspirin. Using the theoretical yield, we can calculate how many moles of aspirin should be produced. So we have 7.32 grams divided by the 180 gram formula mass to give us a moles of 0 0.04. So one to one relationship between aspirin and salicylic acid. So you would have the same number of moles of salicylic acid. We need the mass of salicylic acid that we would have to weigh out to produce this much aspirin. So we'll take the moles, which is 0 0.04, multiply it by the gram formula mass from the question. So you would need to weigh out 5.61 grams of salicylic acid to be able to produce 4.76 grams of aspirin. Pause the video now and try this similar question. So this question looks at the final step in the synthesis of paracetamol. We use 4-aminophenol, again with ethanoic anhydride, to produce paracetamol and ethanoic acid. This particular synthesis here says it has a percentage yield of 87% and we're trying to work out the mass of a 4-aminophenol required to make 5.8 grams of paracetamol. So again, if we start with the information from the question, we have 87% as our percentage yield. We have an actual yield of 5.8% and we don't know what the theoretical yield is. If we rearrange this for theoretical yield, we will have 5.8 divided by 0 0.87. This gives you a theoretical yield of 6.67 grams. We then need to work out how many moles of paracetamol that would be. So if we take the 6.67 grams and divide it by the gram formula mass in the question, then we get 0 0.044 moles. Again, it's a one-to-one -one mole relationship. So the moles of the 4-amino phenol complex compound will also be 0 0.044 that would be required. If we then take the, take the gram formula mass, we can work out the mass of 4-aminophenol that we'd need to be weighed out to be able to make 5.8 grams of paracetamol. The mass that you would need would be 4.8 grams. The final type of calculation we're looking at is volumetric analysis. So this is just, just titration calculations which you've came across before. So here we have a student that is standardising 20 ml of sodium hydroxide solution, of which we're then going to try and find the concentration of, with 0 0.112 mole per litre oxalic acid solution. The first step in the calculation is going to be to work out the average titer of oxalic acid that was used. 
So we're going to take 11.6 and 11.7 and divide them by 2. And then your final answer, you will need to divide by 1,000 before you can use it. The next step is going to be to work out the moles of oxalic acid. So we're going to do concentration times volume. Concentration in the question is 0 0.112 and your volume is your average titer. So the moles of oxalic acid that we use in this titration is 0 0.0013. You can see we have a 2 to 1 relationship between sodium hydroxide and oxalic acid. So the moles of sodium hydroxide will be double that of oxalic acid. And then to work out the concentration of sodium hydroxide, we simply rearrange the equation that we use for concentration. So we have moles divided by volume. So you've just calculated the moles. The volume is in the question as 20 mils, so you need to divide that by 1,000. And then you'll find that the concentration is 0 0.13 moles per litre. Pause the video now and try this last calculation on volumetric analysis. So in this question, we're looking at the iron content of an iron tablet. Uh, we're taking 20 millilitre aliquots of an iron solution um, and the tablet was originally dissolved in 100 mils of water and we're trying to find the mass of the tablet that was iron. The iron is titrated with 0 0.021 moles per litre permanganate solution and the iron and permanganate react in a 5 to 1 ratio. So again, the first thing we need to do is to calculate the average titer, and that is of permanganate. So we take the two concordant titers, 34.9 and 34.8, and divide them by 2 to get 34.85, which we're going to divide by 1,000 before we use that. We can then calculate the moles of permanganate that were used using concentration times volume. So we have 0 0.021 times your average titer, which is 34.85, divided by 1,000. And this gives us moles of permanganate of 0 0.00073. Permanganate and iron are in a 5 to 1 ratio, so we're going to times that by 5 to find the moles of iron. And that is in the 20 mils. The iron was originally in 100 mils, so we need to times that by 5 again to find the moles of iron that were in the tablet, which is 0 0.18. We can then find the mass of iron that was in the tablet by multiplying by the gram formula mass. we find that the tablet was 1.02 grams of iron. I think you'll have been able to see from this video that the stoichiometric calculations that you're asked to do in advanced hire are purely a mixture of calculations that you have experienced before in slightly new contexts or combinations. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Kim for regular updates on new videos. Bye for now.